alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency is the topic for this video and before we get uh, started with everything it's important to um, talk about some of the players involved in this uh, deficiency in this disorder so the first one is alpha-1 antitrypsin uh, obviously that is the main player so what is it alpha-1 antitrypsin is an enzyme and it is produced in the liver so I'll draw a little liver here and alpha-1 antitrypsin once it's produced by the liver it goes into the bloodstream this is the abbreviation for alpha-1 antitrypsin and this is the bloodstream and then once it gets into the blood it travels to the lung and it goes to the lung now what is what is its function in the lung it protects the lung what does it protect the lung from protects the lung from damage so alpha-1 antitrypsin protects the lung from damage from damage from what something called neutrophil elastase okay remember that and I'll abbreviate it NE and neutrophil elastase what is that well it's a protease that white blood cells um, produce and a protease by definition is something that breaks down protein so the neutrophil elastase attacks the lung attacks the lung and what the alpha-1 antitrypsin enzyme does is it prevents that so if we can sort of draw a little arrow here it kind of it stops that from happening so you want alpha-1 antitrypsin it's an enzyme that protects the lung from damage from neutrophil elastase which is a protease produced by white blood cells okay so that's very important to understand now this deficiency or this disorder is called alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency meaning you are deficient in this now why does that happen well it happens because there is a mutation in this genetic disorder it's autosomal recessive there is a mutation in the gene that codes for alpha-1 antitrypsin as a result people who have this are deficient in alpha-1 antitrypsin the enzyme so what happens two main things that you need to remember that happen as a result of this deficiency of this enzyme the first thing is this deficiency or this mutation rather what happens is it makes it so that alpha-1 antitrypsin cannot go into the bloodstream so it accumulates in the liver when it accumulates in the liver it causes liver damage okay so that's the first component of this um, disorder the second thing that happens is think about it alpha-1 antitrypsin does not go into the bloodstream it does not go to the lung so as a result neutrophil elastase is free now to come and attack the lung and when it attacks the lung you develop lung disease so you develop COPD emphysema chronic bronchitis and we'll talk a little bit more about that but I want you to understand this what's going on here okay before I get jump into symptoms I just want to talk a little bit about those two things we just mentioned the liver and the lung so remember I said that the alpha-1 antitrypsin molecule that's has a mutation um, it's not uh, exiting the liver it stays in the liver and causes liver damage so what type of problems does the liver develop it can have jaundice you can have cirrhosis and you can also increase the risk of developing cancer in the in the liver now what about the lung if the lung is not uh, being protected by this alpha-1 antitrypsin enzyme the neutrophil elastase will damage the lung so as a result the tissue destruction in the lung can lead to things like emphysema COPD chronic bronchitis etc that's the main main summary of this um, disease so now let's talk about the symptoms and the symptoms really that we're talking about 
are the symptoms that a person presents with. And the symptoms uh, of um, the lung uh, damage can present as jaundice, but the more uh, classic symptoms of alpha-1 antitrypsin are respiratory symptoms like difficulty breathing, cough, wheezing, things like that. Also recurrent infections. Recurrent infections can be um, uh, recurrent pulmonary infections, respiratory infections can be uh, part of the symptomatology. So how do you diagnose this? Well, the diagnosis of this is actually quite difficult because think about it, if somebody has symptoms of emphysema or COPD or chronic bronchitis, you're not going to think alpha-1 antitrypsin. You really don't. And 95% of people who have alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency are never diagnosed it's true because the diagnosis is very difficult what scenario would you have to be presented with to try to diagnose this well first of all how do you diagnose this and that is you do a blood test a simple blood test that measures the level of the enzyme the level of the enzyme alpha 1 antitrypsin and this uh, there is a test that does measure that and obviously if the person's levels are very low they're you know deficient in this enzyme but when or why would you do that test do you do it on anybody who comes you know in with difficulty breathing or respiratory symptoms well no there's certain clues that uh, uh, populations that uh, you suspect uh, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency in and the first one is people who develop emphysema at a young age emphysema less than 45 years of age people who who have no they're not smokers um, uh, and they don't have any occupational um, exposure but they develop emphysema at any age that's another red flag you know they, they don't they're not smoking they don't have any occupational exposure why do they have emphysema um, also unexplained unexplained liver disease that's another one, um, liver disease or cirrhosis. It's tested on the licensing exams, but in, re in the real world, um, unexplained liver or lung disease, it's kind of like a diagnosis uh, that you have to search for. It's not very obvious. But like I said, if you do uh, suspect it, this is how you test it. There's a blood test that measures the level of alpha-1 antitrypsin. Okay, let's say you did diagnose it in somebody. A patient came in with respiratory symptoms, has some liver uh, disease, they don't smoke, they don't have any occupational exposure, you suspected alpha-1 antitrypsin, and they are indeed deficient in that enzyme. How do you treat it? Well, the treatment is very interesting. It's actually just replacing the alpha-1 antitrypsin. You have to give it to them in, in the form of a uh, weekly injection. And uh, that essentially replaces um, the, the enzyme in their body that they're deficient in. Um, other things, of course, that help the respiratory uh, component of the disease include bronchodilators, uh, steroids, the, the same way you would treat emphysema or COPD. And then in most extreme cases, if there is so much damage in the lung or liver, a transplant of the lung or liver and um, other things, of course, is uh, no smoking and uh, no alcohol because smoking can exacerbate the damage in the lungs and alcohol can worsen the damage in the liver. Um, before I get to a clinical vignette, I'd like to show you this nice diagram. And I really like this. So this is the normal scenario where you have alpha-1 antitrypsin that protects the lung from damage from neutrophil elastase. Remember we talked about that. And right here shows it again. And the neutrophil elastase is something that's produced by a white blood cell. And the neutrophil elastase is produced by the white blood cell um, to remove uh, bacteria, uh, harmful bacteria. And that's really the, the purpose. Really uh, initially produced to help the lung. But if the alpha-1 antitrypsin isn't there, it can eventually start potentially damaging the lung tissue itself. 
So that's an important. Now if you have deficiency, the lung doesn't have the alpha-1 antitrypsin uh, to protect it anymore. So it just accumulates in the liver and there's you see it accumulating, it's trapped in the liver and when the alpha-1 antitrypsin is trapped in the liver it can cause liver damage. And then in the lung, the neutrophil elastase right here can go and damage the lung and it won't have the alpha-1 antitrypsin enzyme to uh, stop the neutrophil elastase from damaging the lung tissue. So this is a nice diagram that explains what's going on. All right, so now let's talk about this clinical vignette. 20-year-old man with alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency comes to the student clinic for initial visit when starting school. He tells you that he is here for a few years and would like to establish a relationship with the doctors in the clinic because of his chronic condition. He is currently asymptomatic. His vital signs and physical exam are normal. Chest x-ray reveals mildly increased lung volumes. Liver function tests are normal. Besides the routine counseling that you provide to all patients at the student health clinic, the most important preventive care issue for this specific patient is. A lot of these seem like common sense, but remember the two main players, the two main organs that are damaged by this uh, alpha-1 antitrypsin are lung and liver. And remember, part of the treatment or part of the counseling involves no smoking and no alcohol. So it would be choice A.